Hi, everyone. So I will start with a survey. Uh, who does know about uh, AutoML? Quite a few, OK. For those who don't know, uh, AutoML is, uh, is a service on the Google Cloud Platform which optimized, uh, which produced a model uh, based on your own data. <laughs> and this model will be uh, optimized for your data for best accuracy. I am a machine learning uh, engineer at, at, at Netatmo. And uh, at Netatmo, we create uh, objects for your smart home. And uh, in particular, we are working on cameras. We have two cameras, one you put inside your, your house and one for the outside. And the, the cameras are able to perform face recognition and also object detection directly on the product. So we don't stream uh, videos to the cloud. We do all the computations uh, on our own devices. And uh, furthermore, we don't have GPUs to do that. So we do it on CPUs only and on embedded CPUs only. So because of that, we have different constraints. And uh, these constraints are not well uh, studied and uh, covered uh, by the community. And uh, most of the time, we are on our own. So before starting the, really the talk, uh, I want to make sure we have the same basis. So I will talk about a classification task with a convolution road networks. We will evaluate this classification task on the data set, which is called ImageNet. It's a standard for the, for the, for the task. And uh, what I call network optimization, I mean the structure of the network. So uh, I mean the, the, the different operations which are inside the network, and not the parameters for these operations. When we started the project, it was before 2016, and uh, the community was around here. So each dot is a, is a state-of-the-art model. Uh, and here, you have the, the number of multiplications you have in the model. The more you are on the right, the, the slower it is. And you have the top one accuracy on the, on the, data, on the data set. And the blue box here is the region where we want to, to be because we have limited resources, but we still want to have good accuracies for our models, so our product works well. The traditional procedure to optimize uh, a state-of-the-art model to run on embedded devices is to take a model, try to modify it in some way, and you have many methods to do that. You retrain your model and you evaluate, evaluate his perform, uh, performance. If it's good enough, you're done. If not, you repeat the process until uh, you have a, a good enough model for your, for your use case. And of course, this, uh, this, this procedure is very is manual and tedious to work because you, you do it by hand. So again, this is the state of the art where we started. And it's improving, right? So, in the, in the next few years, in the last few years, uh, we have seen some new models emerging, which start to be inside the range we want to to be to be in. And these architectures are found manually. It means uh, data engineering, uh, data scientists, sorry, um, made the process of. Uh, designing new architectures, new operations inside your, your network to be more efficient. And in the last few years, we have seen a new trend. Some papers from Google, for example, uh, started to uh, present new methods to search for neural network architectures automatically. And in fact, the, red, the, the yellow dots is the, the result from the paper, which is the foundation of AutoML. You have one model here and one model here. And we will try to, com to compare this with, 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 with this one. The problem with AutoML is it only optimizes for accuracy. And it scales down the network with, uh, when changing uh, parameters 
to, to be able to, to work well on mobile. Here, we take another approach. We want to do multi-objective optimizations, and for the purpose of this talk we, will talk, we will take speed and accuracy to optimize at the same time. Another uh, difference from AutoML is we will optimize a population of uh, individuals, each individual being a different architecture, and we will search for all the possible trade-offs between our uh, metrics uh, at the same time. And in the end, we will produce a curve which all the trade-offs and our data scientists can pick the right network for the right use case. And for that, we, we use the genetic algorithms to, uh, to generate new architectures based on the previous one. So, in details, Devolver is, so it's the name of the project, Devolver takes a, a random population of individuals, so uh, random architectures. We use the genetic algorithms to generate the same number of candidates. These candidates are evaluated in parallel because each task is an independent task, and we collect the, per the, the different metrics we want to optimize on. We, we then have N parents and N candidates. We select the best one, the N best one, to be the next parent for the next generation. And we iterate until we have uh, uh, good enough networks uh, for our use cases. So again, the main advantage of this approach is the training of candidates. Uh, each candidate is independent. And uh, most of the time is spent training these candidates. So if we can optimize the red part of the graph, uh, it will improve dramatically the, the performance. And in fact, it's possible to scale on multiple machines this way. If you want to do it the naive approach way, uh, you will do it by yourself. So you code everything. So you, you, you build the software for the server and for the workers. And you, you have to manage all these tasks. Arbit management, worker failure, scheduling, acknowledgement, scaling of the workers, and you have to invent a new protocol for, uh, for the exchange of data. And we, want to, we don't want to do that because we are a research team. We want to use uh, on-the-shelf uh, tools. And for that, we, used, uh, we, we set out on RabbitMQ because it's easy to use. And uh, because we don't have a lot of traffic on our broker, the, the specific implementation is not really what, what, what matters. The point is, we, we, ha we will have uh, an element in here which handles all of this problem for us. If you don't know RabbitMQ, I will say it's a queue or a set of queues. And you can have multiple producers putting message in the queue. And you can have one or multiple, multiple consumers picking the room and handling the message uh, in the queue. And I will use uh, only these concepts for the rest of the talk. So we managed to, to put RabbitMQ in between our server, which where runs the, the genetic, genetic algorithm, and the workers, where the training is done. And because of that, we, we have easy um, uh, implementation, we have full tolerance for free, and we can scale dynamically the workers. And we are also tolerant to a worker failure. The problem is now uh, we don't have only one machine, one script running. We have multiple instances, and some of them can fail, and we have to restart them manually. So can we do better? And in fact, yes, uh, you, have, you have heard about, uh, about Kubernetes in the previous talks, and we also use Kubernetes here. We use it to automate the cluster deployment and also uh, to monitor the, the nodes and, rest and um, automate the worker restart. And with Kubernetes, it brings many improvements, many, uh, many pros to the, to the table. The main one is we now are able to use preemptible instances 
or spot instance for, uh, for the workers and reduce drastically our cloud costs for that. In the end, when you run the, pro the, the process, on the left you have the, the different, each dot is a, is, is, an, is a different architecture and you, you can see the number of generation increasing uh, up here. And here, the more you are on the right, the faster you are, and the more you are at the top, the more precise you are. And you see that you can have all the compromise between speed and accuracy, and a good data engineer can select the right one corresponding to the right speed we need on a, on a specific device for the, for the specific use case. And on the right, you can see examples of uh, micro blocks inside uh, the network that are um, uh, found automatically by the process. If you are more interested uh, on this project, you can have a look at the paper on archive. Here are, the, are a few uh, results for, the, for this paper project. We found a state-of-the-art network uh, which is similar to the best network uh, we know for this kind of uh, uh, computation requirements. We did it on a non-trivial search space with a lot of combinations. And we did it with 40x speed up compared to the previous uh, methods. Like, uh, for example, 40x is compared to the AutoML paper. The, the whole project is available on my GitHub page, so feel free to, uh, to have a look. And in the end, this is the, the final result uh, on the graph, so I showed you before, and the red dots are the ones from Devolver. We are not the best on all the, in the, the spectrum, but uh, with our own limited resources, uh, we are quite happy with, with, with this result. In conclusion, we have learned to not reinvent the wheel. And with RabbitMQ, we reduced the, the, the world time computation for the search from 50 days to two days. And for us, it's a very big deal. We had fault tolerance, and we also reduced our cloud costs by 60%. And uh, if we can do it, you can do it too. Thank you.